and welcome to another video by Reading Monstrosities, the channel dedicated to the review and discussion of transgressive and horror literature. Today, I am joined by a special guest, my wife. <laughs> Want to say your name? Hi, I'm Heather. Yeah, she's gonna... Basically, today, uh, we wanted to do a little open discussion on the topic of trigger warnings in literature. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a... In the world of horror and extreme horror, I've noticed online there's a lot of debate in terms of trigger warnings. And by trigger warnings, I'm referring to the warnings you see in the beginning of books that uh, just let the reader know that there might be offensive material inside of them. Now, as far as I can tell, there are two very distinctive parties when it comes to, uh, to uh, trigger warnings. You have the people that appreciate them, the people that like them, mm -hmm. and the other side that really doesn't like them. In fact, some people are just flat out offended at the idea of trigger warnings. I've actually seen some people uh, online comment that, you know, if you're going to read extreme, if, if you need trigger warnings, you're not ready for extreme horror. Mm -hmm. And uh, so obviously there's some debate, some, I guess you can call controversy surrounding trigger warnings. So we're going to sit here and just kind of discuss trigger warnings a little bit. Um, I guess I'll just start with my thoughts on trigger warnings. I kind of come from the school that I don't mind them. Um, I don't really have any very many triggers, so I've never needed them. Uh, in fact, for me, trigger warnings are kind of a selling point in a lot of the books that I read. If I see a book that has <laughs> trigger warnings, extreme trigger warnings, I'm like, well, I got to read this shit, you know, because I just want to see what the author came up with. Mm -hmm. uh, but having said that, um, I, I don't mind them. I'm not offended by them. And uh, in fact, I kind of actually, I uh, respect an author that puts trigger warnings in their novel because it tells me that the author is a human who is thinking about the potential sensitivities of their reader. So in that case, I don't mind them. Even though myself, I don't need them. I got no problem with them mm -hmm. and I'm certainly not offended by them. Um, so that's kind of the school that I come from. I don't mind them. Don't need them, but they're fine. How about you? What do you think? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I can appreciate a good trigger warning because I do have triggers. Um, I should also say that I am not an extreme horror reader. We're going to discuss yeah, the kind of books we read here in a little bit. You'll see that. that we read. We do have different kind of, some overlap, but a lot of also different tastes in books. Mm -hmm. But I can appreciate a good trigger warning because I have a specific memory of being like 13 and I started reading Lovely Bones. Spoiler alert if you haven't read that and you're planning on reading that, just letting you know. Um, yeah, my sister was and my mom were like, this is such a good book, you need to read it. I started reading it and then it's talking about a man killing a young girl and like raping her and like I completely like freaked out. It's like, I don't want to read that kind of thing. So and I can book, appreciate... That book didn't have a trigger warning. That book did not have okay. a trigger warning, but I can... Now I can appreciate a trigger warning because there's certain things that I don't want to read about. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm all for them. And yeah. I can also appreciate like your perspective of like, you don't need one, but you see one and be like, hey, I want to read that. You know, It could sometimes be a selling yeah. point, especially if you're into, into you know, in, into extreme horror. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, something that I was thinking about is... I was thinking about like the comment I said earlier, how some people say if you if you're reading ex if you need a trigger warning, you shouldn't be reading extreme horror. You're not ready for it, and that may be true to an extent. But I, the way I think of it is, not every extreme horror reader is the same. Mm -hmm. You know, some people may love cannibalism and love reading books about cannibalism and that kind of stuff, but maybe they're triggered by child abuse. So maybe they can take their cannibalism, but if there's child abuse, that'll trigger them for, you know, any number of reasons. So not every extreme horror reader is the same. You know, we all might have individual triggers. Um, for me personally, like I said, I don't have a lot of triggers, but there are a few little things that get to me. Um, animal, animal abuse is one thing that I have a really hard time reading. Mm -hmm. I'm an animal lover. We both are. Mm -hmm. um, so reading about animal abuse is difficult for me. I'll still read the book. Um, but it is hard for me to read. I'm kind of weird that way. I can read books where the most twisted stuff <laughs> happens to human beings. I mean, I can read about just about anything happening to a human. But once you get an animal involved, I'm like, hey, man, easy, take it easy. You know? For me to list my trigger warnings would just probably take way too long. <laughs> so there are certain things that definitely trigger me. Obviously, sexual assault. 
is one that definitely triggers me. That is smart, um, definitely hurting hard kids. To that's something that really triggers me. Um, animal cruelty, um, obviously racism, homophobia, misogyny, sexism, those type of things do trigger me but um it depends on like how far into it they go mm-hmm. you know like when i was reading Di- diana gabaldon's book out the outlander like the first book i'm gonna give spoilers <laughs> i'm gonna have to spoilers. do another spoilers <laughs> maybe we should talk... have spoilers He's gonna have outlander so if you haven't read it yeah if you haven't read outlander um the first book um what happens to jamie in that story was horrific and that definitely triggered me and it almost made me put the book down because of what happened to him. Mm. So how about we go ahead and transition and start talking about some of the books that we read. Uh, or the authors that we read. <laughs> and the thing know? about like extreme horror, and I got a couple of them here, is sometimes you can, just by looking at the cover in itself, that should be a trigger warning. Um, or even the title, uh, the one on the top here, for example, uh, Christopher Triana, uh, They All Died Screaming. Mm-hmm. The title in itself should kind of let you know that this is probably going to be somewhat triggering. Um, But there are other um, Masters of Taboo, Cannibalism. That cover in itself should be a trigger warning, I would think. So yeah, you would know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. Uh, But there are a couple of books that I've read recently. Um, For example, the great book, uh, Violence on the Meek by Stuart Bray. Right at the bottom it says, uh, this book contains extremely violent content and language. There's just a little bit. You can turn to any page and you're going to find something violent. Mm -hmm. The other one, uh, No One Rides for Free, Judas Sonnet. Great book, but very triggering. It is, uh, she even wrote, I mean, there's a trigger warning on the front. Warning, this book features disturbing violent crimes. Turn the page, No One Rides for Free is an incredibly disturbing and extreme book. It deals with themes that should, should, and will upset readers. Um, You turn to another page. The following book has been rated... 10 in Roman numerals, meaning it's that good. It's a 10 out of, no, rated X. (laughs) Um, And even at, so this book has, um, you know, she put trigger warnings all over the place, even right before chapter six. And this is actually, I saw this page on Instagram. Somebody posted it and I was like, when I saw this, like, well, I got to read the book, but just a warning, you know, saying what's, what's coming up. Uh, If you continue reading and find yourself growing weak with shock to starve off sickness, fainting, and even death, repeat to yourself, it's only a book, only a book. So, you know, mm-hmm. so I appreciate that. And the fact that she even said that the stuff in here should upset readers. Yeah. The author's uncut, uncensored version. Another great book, Jack Ketchum's Off Season, his first novel. I'm going to do a review on this one day. You know, the cover on itself should kind of give you a sense of what you're getting into. Uh, another one, th- this guy's definitely one of my top favorite writers, mm-hmm. Rath James White, Succulent Prey. He writes a lot of disturbing stuff. Um... Uh, this is one of his cannibal novels. Um, and, you know, I think even just, if, if you're going to get into extreme horror, even just reading the commentary on the backs of the books, that should give you a sense mm-hmm. of what you're getting into. Um, another great cover, a novella, His Pain. <laughs> this one definitely had some twisted, twisted stuff in it. So, how about you go ahead and go through... This This gives you an example of the kind of stuff I read. Yeah, that's... A, how about uh, you go I ahead have, and go through what you read? I have some examples here. I go to the library a lot, so I don't actually have a lot of physical copies. Yeah, so oh. some examples here of, like, what I read, like, I'll, like, read, like, Anne Rice, you know? And, like, I really like vampire. Like, that's the type of horror that I'm into, is, like, vampire stories, you know? Well, um, it's like, you like... You like what? Vampires? Vampires, zombies. zombies. That, for some offs. reason, that's the type of horror that I can stomach is like vampires and zombies, you know? And then sometimes, to a certain extent, some like supernatural stuff like with like witches and mm-hmm. things like that, um, to a certain extent. Um, so yeah, so like Anne Rice, you know, I, I am reading, <laughs> I am reading this series. <laughs> Yeah, so it's so Sarah James Moss. Is that how you say her Ma- name? I have no idea. Yeah, so I'm reading uh, the Actor series. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it right now. And It's a graphic novel, I think. I've read most of Charlene Harris's books um, of like every genre that she's written. Um, I haven't read this yet. This is a graphic novel, um, Cemetery Girl, but this is on my to-read list. Um, I got another Anne Rice here that I'm planning on reading. So this is my to read pile, actually. So I don't have any of the ones that I finished. Um, and 
these two I've actually read. So I actually also read a lot of uh, nonfiction. So, um, so like Breeding Sweet Grass. This yeah. was an excellent book. And this is where we have a little bit of overlap of like our reading yeah. material. We'll read a lot of uh, like, I guess, naturalist books. And yeah. Things. I think for like people that have read a lot of extreme horror at a certain point, you don't need the trigger warning anymore. But it's still, it's it comes down to the reader, I that guess. That does make sense because like, I remember when I was younger, like, for example, I'm gonna go to movies and stuff. Like, I could not watch zombie movies, like, at all when I was, like, a kid. Like, they freaked me out way too much, but now it's like, I can't get enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, my tolerance built up over the years of, like, exposing myself to it and being, mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. kind of appreciating it. And, like, like what was it? You were, you were referencing the Evil Dead. Yeah, Evil Dead. Evil yeah, Dead, yeah. like, and... This time uh, you can watch that. Yeah, there was way back... And what was it? Oh, I love Bruce Campbell. Well, we Everything love Bruce he's Campbell. in. Bruce Campbell's awesome. And then there was that other um, Dead Alive. That's it. Dead Alive. Oh, Dead Alive. Yeah. Total just over the top zombie splatter. Well, should we talk about the first time I ever had you when we first got married? I had you try to watch one of my extreme horror. We watched <laughs> Cannibal Holocaust together. You talk about a Hannibal Girl Day. But yeah, you just got upset with me because of the movie. I remember you saying it was the sickest thing you've ever seen. Well, I grew up extremely sheltered. That's a long story. Oh, I... So it was like kind of like my first exposure into that world, actually. I mean, of like horror, extreme, really. Extreme, extreme kind of horror. Well, Cannibal Holocaust. It was one of the uh, very first movies mm -hmm. that used the uh, what's called the found footage mm -hmm. thing. You know, like Blair Witch Project. They popularized it with like the shaky cam look. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think it was Cannibal Holocaust was like the first movie that actually did that kind of stuff. Yeah. But no, I just, at that, and at that point, you know, I'd been watching enough extreme horror um, to be kind of used to it. I think that was your very first. That was like I kind of threw you in the deep end yeah, of that movie, Yeah, you threw me in the I deep think. end, and yeah, that one did disturb me. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think for a while there, it kind of took me a while to understand what the appeal was it's, but like once we started getting to like b-rate horror then i could appreciate it like you know b-rate monster the kind of stuff the kind of stuff that's like kind of cheesy but also kind like of stuff you see on mystery science theater yeah because that's like where i have fun with it is like seeing horror in that way and being kind of able to poke fun at it yeah, yeah. In, in the mystery science theater kind of way you know that's where we kind of overlap mm -hmm. in that and we can have fun together enjoying horror together mm -hmm. is in that in respect but like when it comes to like really serious horror he can enjoy that on his own <laughs> so and vice versa so. i guess kind of the final summation is neither of us have a problem with trigger warnings yes right? that long -winded although thing. although um i don't think i said told the story my very first experience with a trigger warning was I actually rolled my eyes. Mm. It was a young adult fantasy novel. It wasn't even a horror novel. Um, and, and, and it just said in the beginning, this book has depictions of, I think it was animal sacrifice and murder. And there were both very, very short scenes. And I remember at the time, just kind of, just kind of rolling my eyes at it because I knew it wasn't going to be extreme. But then I had to remind myself, not everybody reads, extreme literature so even just a normal book with a depiction of something horrific could trigger somebody yeah but i could see what you know, this conversation could even go with like well where do you put the line of like having a trigger warning and not having a trigger warning you know like where's the line like are we gonna have to put everything you know just thinking you start from getting the other that whole yeah you someone start... else's perspective like saying like well where does you know where do you finally draw the line of like what needs to trigger warning and what doesn't, you know? What if someone gets triggered by, I don't know, mushrooms? I don't know. Who knows? Um, yeah. You know? There is milk in this story and I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> you should have put that on there, you know? So it's, you know, reader discretion, I mean, and, and this is where mm -hmm. the, I think probably the bitterness of the debate on trigger warning gets in. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, where where does it end? And yeah, I get that. If you're reading extreme horror, you got to be ready for some twisted stuff. Well, I also at the same time think that there is a certain standard of like, we know certain things are, ap you know, are horrific. And like, obviously to me, those ones would be like, those are the things that need trigger yeah. warning, you know, but like other things is like so niche or something. It, com it comes down to the reader. And mm -hmm. as a reader or even watching a movie, if something offends you, turn it off or put down the book. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it just goes to show that people have different... I guess, levels of tolerance and different concepts of extreme. Another real, little story. Um, 
our local librarian. Um, oh, yeah. I was at the library and, uh, you know, I was telling her about my whole reading monstrosities project. And yeah, I'm doing book reviews and writing horror and extreme horror. And she said, oh, you want to read a creepy book? She pulls out this book and she said, this is creepy. Yeah, go ahead and read this. Uh, the book was called The Other Mother by um, Matthew Dix, I think his mm. name was. And she's, this is creepy. It's about a kid who's, uh, who thinks his mother has been replaced by, uh, by um, an imposter that looks like her. It's kind of like a Stepford Wives thing. This is really creepy. So I read the book, and uh, it wasn't creepy. It wasn't. It was a good book. I really liked it. I'm going to do a review on it one yeah, day. Yeah, by his standards, it wasn't it creepy. It wasn't creepy at all, but apparently she said she didn't even want to finish the book because just the idea of having an imposter in your home... Uh, freaked her out. Freaked her out, mm -hmm. you know, and... You know, so it just, and even when I'm reading my own stories, like I'll read, uh, I'll read my stories, my short stories to my mom, even my not extreme stories. I'm like, I'll just read them. And, uh, you know, just the very concept of what I'm writing, she's like, oh, you know, but she's mm -hmm. not an, ex she's not a horror reader. Um, she's, uh, it's kind of funny. She's supporting my uh, writing projects, but I'm like, hey, I got a short story published. Do you want to read it? And she's like, no. Yeah, I, I think even with some of the stories you're at, you're selective, which ones you'll actually let me read and which ones you'll read to me. You know, I've noticed that there's certain ones that he won't read to me. There's certain ones I won't read. Like, I just wrote one last mm -hmm. night that I'm going to try to send. And what he send shared in. with me, I've actually have enjoyed. I'm like, oh, wow, that was good. That was well, some of like my you monster know? stories, I think you've read. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I don't know. It kind of, I, I, I try to be sensitive to your triggers, I yeah. guess. And maybe in a few years, the more and more I read, maybe I'll start reading your books. I think <laughs> there like... are some, uh, I mean, if you, of all the, here, let me get up you... here. There is one book that you were telling me about that actually sounded really interesting to me. Um, I'm trying to remember There's actually one here, uh, there's a couple of uh, Rath James White books. Uh, 400 Days of Oppression mm -hmm. is um, it, it kind of a lot of social commentary. It, it's horror, but it's not like, I, I don't know. Oh, one. Skins, yeah. that's the other one. It takes place in 1980s, um, uh, the punk scene in, uh, in, in Philadelphia. And it's just about some... Uh, punks living just living in philly and um battling nazis yeah uh, but the main character is a kid named mac and uh he's the only uh, black kid in the uh in the punk scene in philly in this book and this was a really good one um i wouldn't even call it necessarily horror even though there is a lot of violence um but I don't know. This is a good book. Yeah, I'll you told me a little bit about this one, and this is actually one that I thought I might be interested it in. Reminds, if you've ever so. seen the movie SLC Punk, it kind of reminds me of kind of a bit more of a violent version of SLC Punk. Mm -hmm. But um, these are a few that you could probably tolerate. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. anyway, thanks for watching. Do you have anything else to say? Thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe. Uh, Share, comment. Yeah, see, what, what do you think of trigger warnings? You know, and, uh, and we'll uh, maybe get a little discussion going. So. Yeah, thanks for having me. See you, uh, see you <laughs> for the next video. Oh, there's the kitty. Hey. You don't need a trigger warning to love that face. Hey, beautiful.